So we have this whole homosexual agenda. Now I want to state something. Um, all sexual sin is wicked, but I think we've gotten more used and accepting, and we shouldn't, of um, pornography and lust and adultery, fornication, and so forth. The legalization and acceptance of homosexuality is normal, just so happens to be more new. So it seems to be the focal point of your media. I think that, along with a couple of other things, is like your final sexual sin that you can commit. There's bestiality, which that is becoming more prominent, something you hear about more and more in the news. And now we have um, cannibalism, which that's not necessarily a sexual sin. That's a different type of sin. But we just had something happen in, I believe it was Nashville, Tennessee, where a man chopped up this woman's body, took her head off and her limbs, put them in buckets, and then proceeded to eat her, her dead remains. And the scene was so disturbing and horrendous that the authorities would not comment much on anything much less than what I just revealed. So we have these horrendous crimes going on. Um, we've had for a long time now people having sex with children, pedophilia, that is going on more and more. And you see the acceptance of this in society. Have you ever paid attention to the clothing in stores for young girls? They are sexualizing children. Have you ever paid attention to how the kids in Disney and what's the other one, Nickelodeon, how the girls look. The girls are dressed like little prostitutes. They have their breasts showing, mini skirts. I remember one time, uh, I don't know, it was like five years ago, maybe, maybe six years, I was completely blown away. I walked into the room and my daughter was on the internet, my oldest daughter. And I, you know, walked around to see what she was doing and she was watching a video and the video showed a teenage girl wearing cut off butt shorts. And I'm not kidding. They were jean shorts and they went up to the girl's butt cheeks. The girl had on four inch high heels, a halter top, tons of makeup. Her hair was all done up and she was holding on to jail bar, the, the bars of a jail cell. And she was dancing like a stripper. I said, what are you watching? Oh, this is on the Disney. It's a Disney video. I said, a Disney video? Yeah, some girl that's popular on the Disney channel. This is her music video. I made her turn it off, of course, and get off of that website. But I was stunned. Another time, um, this was at my parents years ago. The kids, I come downstairs, they're watching Disney, and there's these four girls sitting on these bar stool chairs with their legs crossed in mini skirts that went up to their thighs and spiky heels. So they're sexualizing children, and not just on Disney, but as I mentioned, in clothing, even stuff for little girls, like little, little girls. So we're seeing this more and more and more to where people are becoming conditioned to it. Nobody hardly, well, I shouldn't say nobody. Let me retract my statement there. Many people see these girls walking down the street like this and don't think anything. Another example, um, a few summers ago, I'm driving down the street and the girls track team for high school would jog down the street all the time. And there's several different high schools. There's one that's a Catholic um high school and then another one that's your public high schools. Both of them, I had seen girls wearing clothes I could not believe. I saw girls wearing boy shorts that cut off and halfway in between their butt cheeks. So the bottom half of their butt cheek is exposed and the upper half is covered. Skin tight um, spandex material. You could see outlines of things in front too. And they were wearing little tops that looked like bras with, it looked like they had nothing underneath, jogging down the street. And these are little high school girls, okay? And then same thing with the Catholic school girls. 
And they're all running down the street in a group, half looked like a girls in string bikinis running down the street in gym shoes, all sorts of people honking their horns and stuff. And I asked my oldest daughter about this. I said, are they allowed to wear that? She said, yes. And I was stunned. I mean, I, I went to these same schools. I wasn't Catholic, but there was a time my parents put me in a Catholic school because of some issues I was having with another girl I was running around with that was in the public schools where we ran away from home and they, they just didn't want us around each other because we were a bad mix. We got in trouble. So they put me in this strict Catholic school for a year. But um, when I went to those schools, I could tell you there it wasn't like that. So things are really changing. Kids are dressing sexually and portraying themselves sexually. Then you have the legalization all over the place of um, there was abortion, just regular early term abortion. Then it got worse with partial birth abortion where the baby, as long as you don't see the baby's head, it's okay. Just turn that baby around inside the womb. And then, of course, I won't go into detail because I don't want to offend anybody. But most of us know what they do, what that involves if you don't Google it. And then if that wasn't bad enough, over the past few years, now they've got live birth abortion where a woman actually gives birth to the baby and they just throw it in a trash receptacle where, according to... Um, what a nurse revealed that used to work in that sort of field. She couldn't handle it any longer. Um, some of those babies live up to eight or nine hours, if not more. But she talked about one that lived eight or nine hours and they're just laying there in the trash can, like no big deal. I mean, this is crazy. We live in a nation that legalize, legalizes barbaric acts. This is awful. This is what's going on. And believe me and mark my words, God is definitely going to judge this nation for what they're doing. God judges all sin everywhere. But we, I mean, I, I'm sorry, this nation is like one big whore, a prostitute. We really are. And the, look at the look at the fornication and the adultery that we commit against God. Even many people who label themselves as Christians living this way. Many people labeling themselves as Christians go to um, sports bars once in a while and they think it's okay to sit in there and have a beer with the guys or the girls and do this and that and it's no big deal. God doesn't want you in that place. I know you're going to say, well, it's no big deal. Yes, it is a big deal. God said specifically, I didn't say it. I'm just telling you what it says. God said to separate ourselves from the world. God says to have no appearance of the world. The world goes to bars. A true follower of Jesus Christ should never, ever be seen in a bar. That's just the way it is. I know there's some of you sitting out there right now that you have a problem with that. Take it up with God. I'm not trying to be mean. That is what his word says. Should a Christian watch worldly television shows and movies? I know that's a real hard one for some of you. You got your favorite shows you watch um, and your favorite movies you watch. But if you were really honest with yourself and nobody was around and you were totally brutally honest with God, you would have to say that probably the majority of things you watch on TV or in the movies are things that God would not have you watch. That's just the truth. If you're watching stuff that's got sexual immorality in it, um, cursing, swearing, taking God's name in vain, witchcraft, you name it, violence, grotesque violence. I mean, there's certain things, even Christian movies, that have violence in it because it goes with what happens. So there's a fine line when it comes to the violence. What kind of violence is it? Why is it there? What do they show? And so forth. But you've got all these immoral things going on and you're sitting there, you may say, well, it doesn't bother me and I know what it is and blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. You are taking that witchcraft, that sexual immorality, whatever it may be into your spirit. You are seeing it. You are partaking in it. If you're sitting there watching it, think of the TV set or whatever you watch your stuff on. It could be the computer like a big altar. Think of it like a big God, if you will. You're all gathered around it. 
paying attention to it, giving it your undivided attention. You're worshiping it in a sense. I mean, it's kind of frightening to think about, but if, if we're addicted to these programs so much that we disobey God with it and we rationalize it against God's word and we call God's word a lie or try to make God's word conform to what we want to do, then you better take a close look at that because you're making that thing your God if you're putting it above God. So if you're giving that thing, another thing to consider, if you're giving that thing more time than what you are God, how many hours total a week do you spend sitting around worshiping your TV set, okay, versus how many hours a week do you spend your time sitting around worshiping God, praying, um, talking with God, filling your spirit with his work? So there's another thing to think about. I'm just throwing things out there for you to think about. You can do with it what you want. I'm not here to bring judgment on you. I'm not the one that's here to tell you what you can and cannot do. I mean, I'm just, I'm a little nobody and I'm not here to tell you that. I'm just here telling you what God's word says. Then you can take and do with it as you want. But you know the truth. I've said the truth to you. Now it's up to you. Now, back to what we were originally talking about, just a little piece of news that's interesting. It's on the Jim Baker Show website. It says, solar flare shockwave aimed at Earth. And he quotes the verse, or whoever wrote this quotes the verse, Luke 21, 25 through 26. There will be signs in the sun and moon and stars and on the Earth dismay among nations and perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves men fainting from fear and the expectation of the things which are coming upon the world for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Now the article reads, and it's just a very short article, only a few paragraphs long. NASA reported a series of three X class solar flares over the last two days that have produced a coronal mass ejection that will strike earth on Friday. Now let me give you the date of this article. Let's see, it says posted on June 12th, 2014 by Jason Wirt, a staff writer. So I'm recording this on June 14th right now. Okay, it's June 14th. Um, it's past 12 midnight, so it just became June 14th. So um, it says the CME is part of two X-class flares that struck Tuesday, a X 2.2 and X 1.5. Both created a coronal ejection, but the second moved fast enough to join the first and project it toward Earth. The Wednesday flare, an X 1.0, caused disruption to radio signals for a brief time, but did not cause a CME. Officials with the Space Weather Prediction Center say that CME will strike Earth sometime Friday. The strike is believed to be a glancing blow that will cause geomagnetic storms at the planet's poles. The CME will disrupt GPS signals and satellite communications. The disruption will be worse on the daylight side of the planet during the solar strike. NASA says the sun is now officially at the solar maximum of its 11 year cycle. However, the scientists say this cycle's solar max is significantly weaker than previous cycles. So, um, that's something to watch, something very interesting, you know, to watch these solar flares. Now, at this point, like I said, this article was written or posted on June the 12th, and they talked about, which that would have been um, Thursday. Okay, so they said something about, where was it here? I'm looking at the article. It says, uh, the disruption will be worse than the daylight side of the planet. Okay, it says, officials with the Space Weather Prediction Center say that CME will strike Earth sometime Friday. All right, so um, that would have been today. Again, it just became the fourth.